What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. I'm merging a little bit of wrestling with finance in this video because we're going to talk about right now, if you are a WWE investor, should you be concerned about the rise in AEW and what happens when AEW Dynamite's total viewership eclipses that of WWE Monday Night Raw? Now, you know, a couple years ago, I would have said that it's not even a concern. Don't worry about it. WWE so far ahead that, you know, as good as AEW gets, I don't think that they're ever going to beat WWE in viewership. Well, there's some things that have happened recently that have made me change my mind on that and made that move from it's not a if AEW Dynamite is ever going to eclipse one of the major roster SmackDown or Raw shows from WWE, it's more of a win. But before we get into that, if you guys out there want to help out the channel, take your finger and hit that like button. Make sure it turns blue. Every time you hit the like button on this video, it will help a WWE sweaty stop crying the day when AEW Dynamite does eclipse Monday Night Raw in the ratings. So out of the goodness of your heart, do that for them. Hit that like button and help them out. We'd appreciate it. So you guys know on like social media where you see those posts that say, hey, tell us what year you were born without saying what year you were born. I think Tony Khan got one of those last week that said, tell the world that CM Punk is coming to AEW without saying that CM Punk is coming to AEW and we got this. And this was a brilliant way of them making sort of the announcement. And it's one of the things that AEW does as opposed to what WWE does. I'm just gonna draw the fair comparisons here. WWE typically beats you over the head with these kind of things. Hey, stupid, you know this is happening. Happening. Unless they do a surprise, which they did a brilliant surprise with John Cena showing up out of nowhere a couple weeks ago. Typically, they're more of a beat you over the head, we don't trust our audience kind of thing going on. AEW does what wrestling does so well and what good promoters and good promotions do so well and have done over history, which is they rely on the fact that the audience isn't stupid. And they know that a good chunk of their audience pays attention to all this stuff. So as soon as you drop hints, Chicago, United Center, First Dance, Dynamite, AEW Rampage, the week of SummerSlam before all outs coming up, Darby Allen talking about best in the world. The viewers put all those clues together and they get the endorphin rush of figuring out the little puzzle you put for them. And on top of that, the puzzle they figured out is also exciting because it means CM Punk is coming to AEW and this is a big game changer for the wrestling world. That is far more effective than them just beating you over there. We're announcing today that CM Punk is coming to the United Center. The way they did it is way better. And I saw some people, even some experienced wrestling journalists, wonder, well, maybe they should have said CM Punk because if they want to sell out that place, you know, there's a bunch of shows there that week. I don't know if they're going to be able to sell a lot of tickets there. Well, let's have a look and see what's on Ticketmaster right now. Well, there's a pre-sale tickets for All Out and there are not a lot of seats available. So, you know... <laughs> If you combine this with Brian Danielson heading to, apparently heading to AEW as well, the former Daniel Bryan in WWE, and another major league wrestler that was just released by WWE from that era, it's too early to speculate on whether or not he's going to AEW, but consider this. And since we're talking about data and trends, if you look at the viewership of AEW and its trend over the last two years, and the trend of WWE's viewership over the last two years, they're going in opposite directions. And at some point in time, they're going to have to cross. Might be three months from now, might be six months from now, might be a year from now, who knows. But eventually at some point in time, I have switched from going a if to a when. There is gonna be a week, I believe, that AEW Dynamite and total viewership will have more viewers than a Monday Night Raw. Hell, they might even catch SmackDown. Well, one of the questions there is, what are the WWE sweaties gonna do in that situation? And when I say WWE sweaties, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, WWE fans, I think, are different. WWE fans are just people who enjoy WWE's type of sports entertainment, and it's totally fine, and you're and you're entitled to enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. Sweaties, however, tend to be the fans who cannot stand and start sweating anytime anybody says that any type of wrestling that's not WWE is as good or better or gaining in popularity or anything positive about any wrestling that's not WWE, especially if you say it's better than some of the stuff that WWE does. Their number one defense, and most of you who are on social media in the wrestling community know this, their number one defense is, well, WWE is the biggest, they have the most people, more people watch them, nobody watches those other shows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If that's your number one defense and the number one reason that you're defending WWE and you're a fan of it because it's the most popular one, not the storylines, not the characters, not the wrestling action, but just because more people watch them than other people. So you, the 
bottle on like a little lemmy to whatever's the most popular thing. Well, what happens then? You go over to watch AEW because if AEW becomes the number one wrestling company that most people watch, do you stop being a WWE fan at that point? Are there gonna be other excuses at that point? Is it gonna be, ah, this is temporary, over the long term, yada, 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 yada. But I think even more important than that, and this is where I get into the business side of it, the actual business side, as some of you guys know, I have another channel called Wrestling With Finance. I am an investor. I do do a lot with finances and personal finances, stock markets, crypto, and everything else. By the way, if you wanna get into investing, I have links down below for you to get two free stocks from Webull, worth up to $2,300 a piece. So you might as well go get free money while you can. But as an investor, and full disclosure, I do own WWE stock that was gifted to me a long time ago. If I was somebody who had spent 30 or $35 on WWE stock, given what's going on right now, I might think about selling. And I say might, because there is a reason to not sell also that I'm gonna get into later, but a reason to sell if you spent that much on WWE stock right now, and a concern that I see a lot of people not really bringing up is that finally the ratings do matter. I know a lot of other wrestling YouTubers and I, I got some pot shots back in the day for when I used to keep saying that the ratings don't matter. WWE is going to still make money no matter the ratings. And people would say, what are you talking about? How can they make more money if they have lower ratings? And then WWE got a billion dollar TV deal from Fox. So yeah, the ratings didn't matter, but now they might. And here's the reason why. So say you like subs and in your neighborhood, you go to this sub shop and this sub shop has been around for 35 years and they're selling subs for $10 a pop. And you go there all the time every week to buy your $10 subs. But two years ago, this other little mom and pop sub shop opened up down the street and now they're expanding to a second store and they're selling subs for $5. And everybody in your neighborhood is raging about these $5 subs from the small sub shop and not so many people are going to the big sub shop anymore. Now you, as a person who buys subs, will be going, wait a minute, while I'm loyal to the sub shop because I've been going to the sub shop for years, your subs are $10, their subs are $5. Everybody, there's a lot of people starting to go to the sub shop. They're all raving about the $5 tuna fish subs that you're selling. So why am I gonna keep paying $10 for your subs when I could be over there paying $5 to get a better sub? At some point in time, the big store is gonna to have to lower its price on the subs. That's just basic Western economics 101. The reason I bring this up, look at NBC Universal, look at a lot of these networks. WWE, the majority of WWE's income, again, does not come from ticket sales, it doesn't come from pay-per-view buys, it doesn't come from even merchandise. It comes from those TV deals, they have the Fox, all those international networks that they sell their content to to air on television. That's where the huge bulk of their money, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, comes in from those revenue sources. If Warner Media is paying $40 million a year for AEW Dynamite, and NBC Universal is paying $150, $200 million a year for WWE Monday Night Raw, and AEW Dynamite is getting the same amount of viewership and possibly even higher portion of the target 18 to 49 year old demographic, look, the people at NBC Universal are not stupid. They know if you're not going to sit there and look and see that Warner Media is paying a fourth of what you're paying for the similar type of product and they're getting as much, if not the same return, maybe even better of a return as far as viewership and ad revenue. Ad revenue is a tricky thing though because AEW Dynamite is TV 14 and WWE is PG, so it's a little bit of a difference there. But even at that, I'm not going to pay four times the amount of money for relatively the same thing that somebody else down the street is getting. I don't know if there are many other investors who are like knee deep into pro wrestling like I am, but as a person who's a big fan of pro wrestling and has been following for a number of years and who's also pretty big into investing in personal finance, this is what I'm seeing. I'm wondering if all of these releases and all of the staff that they've been laying off and all these cost cutting measures that they've been taking, yeah, despite the fact of what their earnings reports were in the past, if WWE does not see what I just said on the horizon and the fact that the bulk of their income, which comes from TV deals, that they might not be getting 200 million, 150 million a year from their TV deals in the near future. Maybe they're gonna be getting a lot less and they're trying to hedge against that now by releasing a lot of talent now because they're expecting that their revenue is going to drop from these TV deals in the very near future. That's why they had that lawsuit, which I talked about on Wrestling With Finance a couple weeks ago. There was a lawsuit because one of the investors was sued WWE because 
they had kind of hinted that they were going to keep one of their international TV deals that they didn't actually wind up keeping and how that would affect the revenue of the company and the stock price. And a Triple H and Vince and Stephanie had sold some shares of stock, kind of knowing that they weren't getting that international TV deal, but not fully disclosing it to its investors. That's what the lawsuit at least alleges. They said, you know, there's, I've heard it several times and read several times. People like, oh, that, that dividend, if the WWE hadn't paid out that dividend to the stockholders, they could have employed all those guys and girls that they let go. It's like, no, that's not how it works. If WWE had cut their dividend and they had stopped paying their dividend, it wouldn't have been that, oh, they just could have given it $9 million to, to employ their other wrestlers employees for another year and a half. It would have been, no, we would lose tens of millions of dollars. A lot of the benefit of you holding WWE stock is the fact that you do get paid a dividend. So if you're not getting a dividend anymore and WWE stock is just kind of, yeah, there's not really much incentive for an investor to hold on to it, which is why I know they shouldn't have given their dividend to pay for their employees. Now, this is not stock advice. This is not investing advice. I am not a financial advisor. I am not your financial advisor, so I can't give you financial advice. I'm just saying that what I would do, and in my opinion, if I was an investor, if I hadn't gotten those WWE shares just gifted to me and I paid probably more than $35 for them, again, I probably think about selling them just the type of investor that I am. You also might think about keeping them if you believe in WWE as a long-term investment that, yeah, they may dip in price, but they'll probably go back up over the long term. It's like you're planning on investing and holding it for 20 years. But if you're not planning on holding WWE stock for a long time, I will look at all of these signs with these cuts, what's going on with their competition that they don't admit is competition, and would really pay close attention to what's going on with the TV deals from the major US companies and the UK companies. Because if the next round comes up and they get those prices cut and they're not getting $200 million, $150 million a year to, for the rights to carry Raw and SmackDown on Fox and NBC Universal and everywhere else, and that price gets slashed, because Warner Media is not paying anywhere net much for it. Again, the networks have leverage, and uh, at that point in time, I'd be concerned. And again, I wonder if that's why they're cutting all these people right now, because WWE kind of sees that in the future, in the very near future, they're probably not going to get these massive TV deals worth over $150 million a year again. But that's just me again. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what you guys should do, but I do want to know what you guys think about this. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. If you want to get started with your own investing journey, you can always look down in the link below. Webull gives you two free stocks that could be worth anywhere up to $1,850 to $2,300. They keep going up in price all the time, how much the stocks could be worth. But basically you get two free stocks, which is essentially like getting free money. So check out the description link down and below in the description box for Webull. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell. And I will see you guys pretty soon here for more news, rumors, and a little bit of financial discussion here on the Ransom Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.